In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady of Mercy, St. Joseph, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our Lady of Ransom, which is this particular title of Our Lady of Mercy, has its origins in um, Spain. Uh, St. Peter Nolasco, I think it is, was his name, was given permission by the King of Aragon and with the help of St. Raymond of Penafort to establish the Mercedarian Order. The Mercedarians were established to ransom captives who were captured by the Muslims, who of course at that time in Spain, they were fighting a long war to drive out Muslims from Spain. And uh, so many times, as we see it today, even today, you know, they have not changed their character. Then Muslims would take Christians captive or hostage. And the Mercedarian order was established by uh, St. Peter Nolasco to, to go out and offer themselves as ransom to either take the place of the hostage or the person who was taken captive or um, in some way to raise the funds to to get this person released from captivity. Uh, also sometimes by themselves offering themselves to be take the place of the person who was being held captive. It would give them an opportunity to minister to the other Christians who may be there held captive and to help them and support them so they wouldn't apostatize. As you know, the Muslims would try to force them by torture or by extortion to renounce their faith. So by going there as a, as a ransom, they would also try to help those who were uh, in captivity to remain faithful. And it must, I would have to say that that would probably have had a high degree of martyrdom involved in it because I don't think uh, the order of mercedarians as they're known would have been very... Um, 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 their life would have been very much a sacrificial life. And that's what the whole devotion to Our Lady of Mercy is about, is that they saw in Our Lady's participation in the work of redemption that Jesus Christ paid the, he is the ransom. He came to get us out of captivity, out of hostage to the devil, to break the bonds that the devil had um, placed around mankind because of sin. And so Our Lady helped pay the ransom. She's Our Lady of Ransom because she provided the body for which Christ could offer the sacrifice, pay the ransom. So she participated in a unique way in the salvation of souls. And she is Our Lady of Ransom, Our Lady of Mercy. Mercy is, in one sense, I think I heard a priest one time say, mercy or justice is getting what we deserve, what is owed to us. Whereas mercy is getting what we do not deserve. And in many cases, as we know, we have received much from God that we do not deserve. In many ways, the characteristic of God's love is mercy. There's the psalm that says, you know, it has as its refrain, it repeats it throughout the psalm, almost as it's a litany. It says, his love endures forever. But you also find that same kind of uh, passage repeated where it substitutes instead of love, mercy. His mercy endures forever. And so this is the kind of love with which God has shown to us in uh, coming to us, his merciful love. And it's appropriate, I think, that as Pope Francis has called for this year of mercy to begin on December 8th of Our Lady's Immaculate Conception, it's appropriate because Our Lady was the one who received the greatest mercy of God. The greatest mercy that God could give anyone is the Immaculate Conception, to preserve them from all stain of sin from the first moment of their conception. One time, a person said to St. Therese, one of her sisters in the convent said, you know, you, you've been such a good, a good child, uh, you know, from such a young age, you, it seems that you have, you have never known sin. 
She said, you must not be able to sing the mercies of God as St. Mary Magdalene, who you know, was such a great sinner and who God freed her from seven devils. She, she said, the sister said to St. Therese, you must not be able to sing the mercies of God as, as well as her because she has received so much. And St. Therese said to her, oh, on the contrary, she said, uh, I sing, can sing the mercies of God very much because... Uh, I'm like the little, like the person who God loved me so much that before I tripped on a stone, he went ahead of me and moved it out of the way. And in many ways, you can see that in the same way as Our Lady, that he preserved her from any kind of fall, any kind of sin, so that therefore Our Lady can sing the mercies of God, just as St. Therese, but even more so, because Our Lady has received the greatest object of God's mercy. No one in heaven can sing the mercies of God more perfectly and more uh, abundantly than Our Lady, who is, of course, Our Lady of Mercy, Our Lady of Ransom. So we look around us today, and so many people are in hostage to other things. Of course, there are many people who are being held captive by Muslims today in the Middle East and Africa. We pray for them that they may soon be released from their captivity and their being under the horrible... Uh, scourge of Islam, but we also pray for those who are held hostage today in many other ways through sins of, sins of the flesh, drug addiction, whatever it may be, their greed for money or power, that they may release from their captivity because with every sin comes a certain bondage, a certain uh, attachment, and it is not a good one as we know. And uh, our Lady came to free us all from these uh, sins and from these bondage that comes with sin. And uh, today we talk about liberty and freedom. It seems that it, they've confused true liberty uh, with licentiousness. And therefore, the, the greatest uh, captives of, of the devil are those who think that they're, they're doing um, uh, things that are which they are trying to call good, which are really the greatest of evils. Those who are held hostage by the devil to think that abortion is health care, uh, are, these are the people that need to be released from their captivity, the blindness that they have placed them in. And so we pray that Our Lady, that we too can be objects of mercy, be objects of uh, help to pay the ransom, to release people from their captivity by offering our penances, our prayers, that we can cooperate. We can be co-redeemers with Christ. Uh, we can be co-redeemers with Our Lady Corredemptrix and help pay the ransom. Uh, apply God's graces today by accepting our crosses and help release people from their captivity to sin and to ignorance, blindness, or whatever it is that they are in that they may see and be free to follow Christ. For true liberty, true freedom has been given to us so that we can follow him. For we have to be free and truly um, accept and embrace Christ without, he doesn't force himself on us. So true freedom is truly given to those who are sons and daughters of God. Let us ask Our Lady of Ransom today to also um, help us and to pray in a special way for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, while he's visiting this country, that uh, his message will be one clear and, and one that is truly challenging our country to truly embrace the gospel and to turn away from those false idols that we have established in our society. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.